Hey everyone, Reed here with Big Strong Book, author of Chorus of a Thousand, now available on Amazon. And today we are talking about The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. Greene has been one of those authors that I've been meaning to get around to for so long now, uh, and I finally read a novel by him, and it was fantastic. Uh, Greene is... I, th I think by most, is a, that's a fair thing to say, he's considered by most to be one of the best um, English language, but certainly English as in nationality, uh, one of the best English novelists uh, of the 20th century. Uh, Green is interesting. He's interesting because for a good chunk of his career, maybe about half of it or so, uh, from, you know, the 1920s and 30s to maybe the late 50s, early 60s, um, he, he would, he would term, he would kind of split the novels he wrote into two groups. There was one that was steeped in, um, kind of introspective religious themes, particularly Catholic themes, overtly. It wasn't really implicit. It was very overt, at least in the early part of his career. Uh, he would term those novels. And then he would write, uh, as I understand it, I haven't read any of these yet. He would write a considerable amount of thriller fiction, spy fiction that, it, as, you know, as of now, it, it holds up as true literature, but he termed them as, he termed them entertainments. So his novels, he himself split them into entertainments versus novels. Novels, maybe even with a capital N, novels. Um, but he, that that distinction faded away through his career. Um, so this novel, The End of the Affair, is was originally termed a novel by him. Um, it's it's just it's it's brilliant um, in its in its prose, in its conflicting dilemma of, of the inner self, the inner spirit, um, trying to discern um, what love is and what love represents and where love comes from and why we, we feel a certain way and why we feel pulled towards individuals. Um, and then the goodness that can result from that or in the, in the lack thereof that can as well um, are very present in this. And um, it's interesting because as I was reading a little more about the end of the affair, um, it almost seems like it was Green uh, writing about his own life and his own life experiences because um, I think around the time or shortly before this, he wrote this book, um, <clears throat> he had an affair. Um, an affair that fell apart. And no doubt, I would imagine that that affair kind of led to, it, it gave him fuel. It gave him kindling with which to kind of stoke the fires of the idea that became this book. Um, so this novel, um, it, it it is first person uh, from the perspective of an author named uh, Maurice Bendrix, who has, uh, he has had an affair with this woman named Sarah Miles, and he's friends with her husband, Henry Miles. Um, and it, it kind of begins as Henry Miles begins to suspect that his wife is seeing somebody. Uh, and uh, Bendrix, though he doesn't directly say it out front to uh, Henry in the beginning, uh, it makes it clear to the reader that at one point in time, about, about a year or so prior, he had a very passionate affair with Sarah Miles, even though he doesn't at this moment. So, but what's interesting is that he's intrigued. He says, well, yes, you know, you definitely, if you, if you feel suspicious of your wife, Henry, you should definitely seek, um, like a private investigator, somebody who can tail her, who can follow her around. Um, but he's not doing so out of the goodness of being, you know, from one friend to another, 
he's saying it because he is the former the former lover wanting to discern who's the new who's the new guy who's the new man who who did was this somebody that she ended her affair with me to to be with him and can that 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 passion that that love that he had for her can that be rekindled and then they he actually he goes out to lunch with Sarah shortly after this and she kind of rebuffs and and even any hint of an advance and it leaves it and he and he feels cold and he feels distant and he feels not, not vengeful is too strong of a word but he feels so he he feels distraught in a very um austere way to where he contents himself to write about it and write and write in his confusion and um later along the way we we start to learn um who it is that sarah has been seeing um and that it isn't necessarily what you might think that the line of she is seeing this man therefore she is having an affair this other man therefore she is having an affair with him it's much different than that um and we start to learn kind of what sarah is what she is going through in her life the the inner turmoil the the questionings the 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 love the the hate that that is within her um but to to skirt around spoilers for just right this second um green is i i'm almost reminded it's it's funny um because this is not a spy thriller novel but the first author that came to mind for me when reading this in who green like who i could draw the comparison to was john le carré reading tinker taylor soldier spy earlier this year it's that kind of i mean it, it, it's it's you know it's that that kind of a prose style the the dry the wit the 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 dark humor that kind of resonates beneath the surface that was something i found um so al ironic i mean i say below the surface but i found it so alive within le carre's prose and tinker taylor soldier spy and i wonder if green was an influence for le carre it seems like he was um but he maybe took that influence more from his spy fiction so i'm of course that makes me curious to read graham's spy fiction but a le carre-esque prose is resident within here and it, it is so brilliant it is so full of insight and wit because you're essentially you know you're you spend almost all of this novel within Bendrix's head and a little bit within Sarah's mind as well or at least her her diary um and it's it's a deconstruction into the, the those emotions that 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 permeate all of our lives that that of love that of resentment why we feel that way why do we feel empty when we ought to feel filled up or fulfilled um why do we why are we drawn to to certain people when we know it to when we know it to be wrong when we know those relations to be wrong where the question is where is it leading us to and this is considered one of the greatest catholic novels of all time catholicism plays a huge part in it again i don't really want to get into spoilers but this novel eventually turns into a question of the the existence of god the the rationality of um the why behind why certain why things happen why do certain things happen um where do the paths of our lives lead us is the big question within this um so it's excellent if you're looking for something like that that can resonate that can tit that can tell an impassioned tale one with great prose another bonus if this is a bonus for those of you out there this isn't a long novel you can kind of tell here it's like 160 pages you can read it through in a, in a few sittings um but but it's 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 great it's it's with such richness that even though this isn't that long of a book you will carry it with you for for so long afterwards um so getting into spoilers here i when it's revealed that who 
Sarah is going to is this man, this rationalist. He's kind of, he has a, he's a facial disfigurement on his, I think it's his right cheek. Um, it's, it's kind of, initially it seems like it's just pock marks, but it's something, it's a disfigurement. And he's a rationalist thinker, and, in, and he's trying to essentially convert people. He's like a, a, str a street preacher. And she goes to him thinking that, that resident comfort will be in there because she's resisting the idea or the notion of the, the existence of God. Um, that the, 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 love, the love that she feels for Maurice or things she feels, and yet she knows that that is predicated on something that, that is wrong, that maybe she didn't value um, Henry in a certain way, or she, she saw his faults but just stopped there and moved on, um, and is in, I mean, she, in, 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 in the way that it is set against the backdrop of the end of World War II, and where for a time there's, there's a moment during kind of, um, during the Blitz, um, if, if that is the term for kind of the, the bombings over London that went on throughout the war, the Blitz, if that was a consistent um, term throughout, but during one of those German bombing runs of London, they, you know, the there, there's a moment where she thinks that Maurice is dead, but he, he's not. Um, and there, there was that, you know, that notion of what she felt after that. Um, but then eventually the irony is, is that she starts to convert the rationalist thinker to a Christian, if not a Catholic um, perspective and viewpoint. And there's the moment of, yeah, where, where she kisses him. It's a moment of, of clarity of... Um, of grief, kind of that grief that she's, you know, expressing the, the these feelings, these, these, in, these inclinations to the paths that she's going down, which is ultimately leading her to the Catholic Church. Um, and she kisses him on the cheek, and then eventually, of course, the disfigurement goes away, and the rationalist thinker is sitting there, you know, pondering why did that happen? What happened? Can these things happen just for really no rhyme or reason? And she dies while she's in the process of, of converting. But then there's where, where the, the, you know, there's, there's that, there's that flummoxing, um, emotion that is within um Bendrix is he becomes he becomes so angry he becomes so angry at, at a god who or at, at the notion of a god because he I mean he eventually says that he accepts that god is real but it's almost like out of spite it's not a true belief he's not a true believer um by the end but he that a, a God who could rob him of something that therefore he will rob. I mean, that, 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 that notion plays into um, the view of, of, of Sarah who is in so much pain. Um, and that, that, that resident pain, she ties to what she hears about, I think Beckett, the, the King Beckett. Um, yeah, that you, since you have robbed me of what I have loved most, I will rob you of what you love most. Um, the, a prayer to God and Bendrix adopts. He, it's not the same thing. And I'll, I'll read it here. It's, um, he, he's so, he's so weary. It's just, he's, he, he's grieving. And out of that, that grief, he, he doesn't seek where there might, where there could be love. He, he doesn't seek the place where Sarah found love, the, the love of, uh, you know, it's obviously assumed the, 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 the love of, the, the the Christian God, the Catholic God, the the love of of, of Christ, of what the of what the sacrifice uh, represents, um, of you know she 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 makes notion of I uh, the, the 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 she kind of counters the rationalist thinker with the evidence for Christ or that it's not you know a not a, a vapor uh, it's not not simply just an, an idea and then and it kind of go you know it goes it, it oscillates between the um the and it's almost like green green is having this internal uh, maybe at this moment in his life even though he had converted to catholicism decades prior he was still he referred to himself throughout his life as a catholic agnostic 
so he wrestled with notion of notions of faith for his whole life um and the ir perhaps the irrational or the mystery versus the rational um and so sarah combats this the rationalist approach of um well some of the texts weren't written for a while afterwards but then she says well why why is there so much fervent writing for something that that was mystical or or th that was never at one point real um so that there's there's a constant balance between between the arguments and she finds the the love the the resident love that wasn't to be found within Bendrix, but that was to be found in something that as we learn at the end of the book when Bendrix speaks with her mother has always been a part of her life um even though she has arguably spent the whole time running from it and 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 there there's there's a communal love almost that that exists through, throughout the whole book between Henry and Bendrix and and Maurice and that that type of communal supportive love that one might tie to Christian charity Bendrix exemplifies through him being there for Bendrix after the death for deciding to live with him lest he not you know go overboard in his grief and then and then there are the moments where they have the the they have dinner with uh with the the the, the priest and Bendrix goes off on him and like I don't understand why you're offering he offers a mass a mass for the dead for uh for Sarah for for a long time afterwards and he just doesn't understand he just can't get his mind around the the what what he views as the irrational is the is the the pining for something that that is that that is dead that is gone um that once it once it dies it has no that where there where there is nothing after and so there is no point to to linger on it but the but the priest feels compelled to offer a mass for her death or the mass for the dead for Sarah for so long afterwards and then there's the of course the private investigator and his son what he sees again that that, that thing that that cannot be ex explained and then he, and then Bendrix is so weary at the end when he says um I wrote at the start uh, and I, ironically, ironically, Bendrix has learned to love. He says he hasn't, because this in, in, in this last paragraph, I wrote at the start that this was a record of hate, ultimate hate, whether that be for Sarah, hate at the universe that that allows for such a thing to happen. Even though, I mean, one could argue he was in the wrong to begin with. And walking there beside Henry towards the evening glass of beer. I found the one prayer that seemed to serve the winter mood. Oh God, you've done enough. You've robbed me of enough. I'm too tired and old to learn to love. Leave me alone forever. The, and the irony is he has learned to love in his own way. The love that, that, that communal love that he shares with Henry, they go out for drinks together. They, they share a bond with one another that that love but but it's not you know it's it's the it's the type of the the, the type of passion that um that Bendrix almost feels obligated to receive to consistently have within his life is um yeah B Bendrix himself is it's a fascinating narr narrator and then of course through that is just that 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 is that resonates so heavily within um within Green's prose styles and capabilities so much so to the point that i can't wait to see um i can't wait to read uh some of green's other novels so that being said the end of the affair by graham green if you've read it let me know what you think of it and as always i will see you guys next time